the last night before the king buries his mother, he thanks the countless people who've supported him and his family. Thank you very much. It was wonderful of you to make the effort. And Today, King Charles received dignitaries from all over the world, from nations small to the world's most powerful leaders, all paying their respects and condolences. Well, all the people in the United Kingdom, our hearts go out to you and uh, you were fortunate to have had her for 70 years. We all were. And then just two hours ago, a hush across the country, a minute's silence of tribute. From Downing Street to streets across the United Kingdom, a moment of reflection. And until the very last moment, her people continue to queue, hoping to be amongst the last to see the late Queen in state. Earlier, those camping out tonight on the Mall to see the Queen cheered their new King. Almost a million people are expected to join them on the streets of London tomorrow. Don't have a tent. We're going to just brave it. So we've got sleeping bags, lots of layers, <clears throat> toothbrush, toothpaste. <laughs> We're ready. <laughs> And the Archbishop of Canterbury tells Julie of the final journey to lay the Queen beside her late beloved husband. It's a profound moment of love for the two of them to be together. They will rest in peace and rise in glory. This is ITV News with Raggy Omar. Good evening. The day that finally marks the end of an epoch and the beginning of another for the royal family and for the United Kingdom begins in just a few short hours. Tonight, King Charles issued a message to the nation on the eve of the state funeral of his late mother, the late Queen Elizabeth II. He said that as we all prepare to say our last farewell, he wanted to offer his gratitude to all those countless people for giving their support and comfort. Earlier, the nation had paused for a minute's silence in remembrance of the late Queen. But the day was also a busy one for the new King, who took up his role as head of state at a Buckingham Palace reception for world leaders, including President Biden. Our correspondent, Emma Murphy, reports. So much has been said in tribute. Tonight, silent tribute. Marked across the nation in honour of a lost monarch. From Downing Street to the crowded streets of the capital, to the nations and the regions over which the late Queen reigned. And from the King tonight, a final tribute before his mother is laid to rest. Over the last 10 days, my wife and I have been so deeply touched by the many messages of condolence and support we've received from this country and across the world, he said. In London, Edinburgh, Hillsborough and Cardiff, we were moved beyond measure by everyone who took the trouble to come and pay their respects to the lifelong service of my dear mother, the late Queen. As we all prepare to say our last farewell, I wanted simply to take this opportunity to say thank you to all those countless people who have been such a support and comfort to my family and myself in this time of grief. In life, the Queen was a global figure. In death, leaders from across the globe have travelled to offer their support and comfort. She had pledged lifelong service and delivered on that pledge commanding respect from those who know the weight of similar service. Later, after signing the official book of condolence, the President reflected on the Queen's contribution to the world. All the people in the United Kingdom, our hearts go out to you, and uh, you were fortunate to have had her for 70 years. We all were. The world's better for her. Thank you. On the eve of what is likely to be the largest state funeral in British history, the weight of welcome falls to the new king. The Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, Your Majesty. 
From across the world, countries large and small, leaders have journeyed to offer their condolences for a woman who served longer than all of them. It was wonderful of you to make the effort. And Plus, it's my, it's my duty. Yeah, it's so kind of you to ring me as well, so I was most touched by that. Tonight at Buckingham Palace, foreign royalty and foreign dignitaries are gathering to remember a woman who often inspired them and offer what support they can to the family who must now honour her legacy. I have been able to speak to a Queen Consort Camilla and tonight we're going to be seeing uh, King Charles and, and Prince William. I, I, my heart goes out to them. It's a very difficult time. I know how much they loved her, deeply respected her, how much uh, of an ex a role model she was to all of them. And I think she has instilled in, in them the most important values of a deep sense of duty, of, of, of discipline, of service for the country. Every leader has his, will leave his own mark, but I think the main principles are going to continue throughout the generations. The feelings of the Queen Consort for the Queen have also been shared, recorded in the months before the Queen's death. She's got those wonderful blue eyes that when she smiles, you know, they light up her whole face. I'll always remember that smile, you know, that smile is unforgettable. Unforgettable to the family and to many of those who feel she was also a part of their families. Emma Murphy, ITV News. As the moment for the end of the lying in state approaches, people have still been trying to join the line to see her. The four day miles long queue has epitomized a very British determination to honor their late queen. Though both the numbers and the waiting time have been gradually diminishing since advice was issued to stop coming to London to join the line. Geraint Vincent reports. Outside the palace of Westminster tonight, some tired faces. These people among the last to see the Queen lying in state. It was incredibly moving and I'm so glad I, I was part of it. It just came over me like a wave and just really, really, really upset, but also a bit of joy in there as well that I was able to come all this way and pay my respects. We did 10 hours. I would have queued way longer than that just to have done it, yes. So no, it was, it was brilliant. It was the waiting, walking, winding testament to the affection in which the Queen was held by so many. The queue that stretched for miles along the Thames and through streets and parks south of the river. And this evening it is coming to an end. With the lying in state ceremony due to finish early tomorrow morning, the authorities said they'd take a decision at some point today about closing entry to the queue so that people were not disappointed. So this afternoon, they started to hurry. Yeah. How come you haven't come earlier? That's a very it's good a last question. Minute it's decision. a last minute. Yeah. Wanted yeah. to be part of this, watching it all on news, talking to people. It just got to the point where you just feel you had to, had to be here, be part of this massive historic moment. It's just so important for the children to be here. And, you know, it's a piece of history that they will need to remember. Well, at least I've given you a chance to get your breath back. <laughs> Hope you haven't lost our place. No, now. you won't have. Are you sure? <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. In the end, they needn't have been in such a rush. After the sun set, entry to the queue was still open and it got slowly shorter. Past London's landmarks, a line of people who will walk through this last night to say goodbye. Geraint Vincent, ITV News. Around a million people are expected to descend on central London tomorrow to witness the state funeral processions. Extra trains have been laid on to bring mourners in and out of the capital in a massive operation to cope with extra demands on transport. But as Chloe Keady reports, many people have already set up camp along the route. They came here to pay their respects to the Queen. But tonight they also got to show their support for the King. It's going to be a long, cold night on this makeshift campsite, and some have come better prepared than others. Don't have a tent. We're going to just brave it. So we've got sleeping bags, lots of layers, toothbrush, toothpaste. The keenest have been here since breakfast time. Some of them haven't slept properly for days after queuing to see the Queen lying in state. Because I knew I was going to be in the queue, I brought lots of layers, comfy shoes, big coat. 
Christina and Marjorie grew up on opposite sides of the world, but both with the same queen. Growing up in New Zealand, we used to go to government house every time there was a royal and we would wave. And um, I was here for Charles and Diana's wedding and for Diana's funeral. And I always said I would come to the queen. Some have come to witness a moment in history. Others want to show their commitment to a queen who never forgot hers. Well, I was a, a girl guide, I was a scout leader, so I, I you know, made my promise to the Queen and the country. So. so you feel like this is your duty? Yes, yes. The Queen is such an icon and I don't know, as a woman I just feel that's like personal and I didn't realise how much I really cared about the Queen until she died really. So why is it that you want to be here for the Queen? Because she's she's reigned over, she reigned for over 70 years and she's a very happy person. This is just a fraction of the numbers that will be here tomorrow. Around a million people are expected to come and line the route as the Queen's coffin makes its final journey from Westminster to Windsor. And as it makes its way up Windsor's long walk, the Wilcox family will be amongst the thousands watching. We didn't know we were going to stay the night, to be honest. It's a spontaneous decision. It's going to be pretty chilly, absolutely. I've got a good team behind me who will be doing shifts and bringing me various things on this little endurance test. It really is worth being here um, for, for the vision and to see and to witness um, you know, a piece of history. Everyone has their own personal reason for being here, but most told me it is also quite simply the least they can do. Chloe Keady, ITV News. Well, the state funeral has been planned in precise detail. Just before a quarter to 11, the late Queen's coffin will leave Westminster Hall and pass through New Palace Yard and round Parliament Square to reach the main entrance to Westminster Abbey. The funeral then begins at 11 o'clock. As it ends, the nation will hold a two minutes of silence. Then the Queen's coffin will be escorted in a mile-long procession through central London. Members of her family, including, of course, King Charles, will walk behind the cortege, beyond the cenotaph and up Whitehall. The procession will then pass through the famous archway and continue up the Mall alongside St James's Park, past Buckingham Palace, before coming to an end at Wellington Arch. The Queen's coffin will there be moved from the gun carriage into a hearse. A funeral convoy will then travel to Windsor. Shortly after 3 p.m., a second procession will escort the coffin along the long walk up to Windsor Castle. Then at 4 p.m., it will enter St George's Chapel for a final committal service. Later that evening, in a private ceremony, the Queen's coffin will be interred in the King George VI Memorial Chapel, where she will rest alongside her husband, Prince Philip, her father, mother and sister. The presence in central London of so many people and the concentration at the state funeral of so many world leaders has meant a massive headache for police. It's led to the biggest security operation of its kind ever seen here. Our global security editor, Rohit Kachru, reports on the measures being taken, including one that's ruffled some diplomatic feathers. This is the biggest single plan in British policing history. And it's the oldest. Some of these arrangements were written decades ago. But on horseback and with high tech tonight, they're being enacted across the nation's capital and beyond. We're inside the control room where a team of police officers will keep check for a range of threats or disruptions. A terror attack, a crowd surge, an unruly protest. We have considered all the various elements we will need to, we've considered all those what-if contingencies, but we will have over 10,000 officers and staff on duty. We're expecting huge numbers of people to come to London. There have been some changes to the arrangements. Plans to restrict air travel around London were scaled back at the last minute due to the disruption it would cause. But for those world leaders flying in, how will they make it to the service itself? Last night, the US leader arrived, but he'll avoid a plan to ferry heads of state to the ceremony, which four foreign diplomats have described to ITV News as undignified. 
President Biden will be driven here to Westminster Abbey tomorrow, but other leaders have been told that they'll have to catch a bus provided by the British government from a site in West London. It's infuriated many diplomats and it shows that there's a challenge for organisers here in balancing security and diplomacy. Evidence of both tonight at a reception at Buckingham Palace. President Biden arrived in his armoured limousine, but dozens of other leaders packed onto a fleet of coaches. This is not only a funeral, but a huge diplomatic event, a moment in history for many reasons. Rohit Katru, ITV News, Westminster Abbey. Queen Elizabeth's funeral will be a formal and public commemoration of her 70-year reign. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, who is giving a sermon tomorrow, gave Julie his reflections on the Queen he knew and her final journey. Enabling people to grieve, enabling people to respond, uh, res responding to their response. Um, it's such a privilege, uh, I feel, and from my point of view, I think we all, and the Abbey as well, just want to do a really good job for the royal family. You observed that the late Queen didn't fear death. Yes. It was very clear that she accepted that she was near the end of her life and there was nothing to fear, that she could make a joke about it. Um, how, how did she joke about oh, it, Archbishop? The one I think I can probably say was that um, <laughs> after she opened the General Synod, the Parliament of the Church of England in 2015, everyone cheered and shouted, long live the Queen! And we were going down the corridor back to her car after this, and she said, do you know, Archbishop, I think I've lived long enough, don't you? <laughs> and, and I said, well, ma'am, I, I think that I'm either going to sound obsequious or um, treasonous, whichever answer I give to that. So we had a little laugh about that and on we went. There will be many people in the country, Archbishop, whose lives are incredibly tough at the moment, mm. for whom 10 days of focus on this clearly mm. historic event will mean that attention has not been on them. on them. People haven't suddenly got more money because there's 10 days mourning. I have huge sympathy. Again, it comes out of the Queen's life. The way she keep in touch with people who were struggling and suffering, her deeply compassionate sense. Let's take that inspiration. You will be accompanying the late Queen and her family right through to the very final moments yes. of tomorrow. And we've learned that she will be buried alongside her late husband. It's a profound moment of love for the two of them to be together, of confidence in, through their Christian faith, and they were both deeply faithful people, that they will rest in peace and rise in glory through the grace of Christ. Archbishop of Canterbury, Archbishop Justin, um, we wish you all the best for your duties tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Well, our royal editor, Chris Ship is here with me. Chris, we're hearing from the Archbishop there. Tomorrow duty, is going to be big duty, work. very yeah. big yes. duty. Um, it's going to be a very, very private and personal end to what will be a whole day of enormous ceremony, the first full state funeral since Winston Churchill. Yeah, you're, you're right, actually. And this time tomorrow night, of course, the Queen will be laid to rest next to her beloved husband, uh, Prince Philip, but also in the same corner uh, where, where she's being uh, buried is a very small chapel in the corner of St George's Chapel uh, in Windsor. Her father, King George VI, is there, her mother, uh, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother uh, as well. But before we get to that mm. point, we've got this massive state funeral. I mean, unless you were at Winston Churchill's uh, state funeral in 1965, you will never have seen anything like this. You know, a coffin born on a gun carriage that was first used for Queen Victoria sure. after it was retired uh, from, from the Royal Navy. So I think it's going to be uh, an element of sheer theatre tomorrow, but it's the point at which the nation and even indeed the world, we've just been looking at pictures of 
um, Joe Biden here, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, the world would be saying goodbye uh, to Queen Elizabeth. But as the, as the King said in the message tonight, and we had that message from King Charles, that uh, he has felt that countless people have been, as he put it, support and comfort to my family at this time of grief. The lying in state ends at 6.30 um, this tomorrow morning. It's been a tumultuous 10 days, Chris. You've been at the centre of it. I mean, looking back, as, a, an, as an epoch ends, mm. a new one begins tomorrow, what it was, what, what's stay, stayed in your mind? <laughs> You know, for me, uh, you've got to look at the lying in state and all the people in the queue. I think about those images that we had of William and Harry kind of doing some things back together, although we shouldn't should overdo that sort of recollection point. I think about the hearse, when it's, not only when it came through uh, Scotland, but also when it came through the streets of London in the dark and it was lit up because we knew the Queen helped design it as well. And also just the people that I've been meeting in and around London in this past week, they just want to be part of it. Even if they're queuing to lay flowers or even if they just want to be in and around the area. There's a kind of sense of sort of shared grief and they really want to be part of it. Chris, thank you very much indeed. So after her death at Balmoral, her journey through Scotland and now nearly four days of lying in state, the late Queen Elizabeth II is soon to be brought to her final resting place. These are the scenes right now at Westminster Hall where members of the public will be able to file past the coffin until 6.30 tomorrow morning. From here, the late Queen will be taken to Westminster Abbey for the state funeral and after that to Windsor Castle. There, the nation will give a final farewell before her family says its own private goodbye. Our coverage of the Queen's funeral begins in the morning with Good Morning Britain from 6 and then Tom and Julie will bring you Queen Elizabeth II, the state funeral here on ITV from 9.30. And that is all from us this evening. From everyone here, good night.